Hi, William Tramp, also known as this and GM here. Zweihander Reforged Edition is now on Kickstarter, but what is the Reforged Edition? Well, it's a comprehensive remaster of the Zweihander tabletop role-playing game, filled with all new content built upon the 2022 starter kit and the original books. According to the Kickstarter, over half the book has been updated to include new content and have much more streamlined rules for play. This new edition has been refined with over six years of gameplay insights, community feedback, and a ton of playtesting. I should know, I've been one of those playtesters for over a year now. So with that experience, I can say pretty definitively that there is a lot to love about Zweihander Reforged. In a few videos that I've made recently, I brought up some of my favorite ways that this game makes the Game Master experience better than other games that I've seen in a similar genre. But I'm not only a game master, I'm also a player. And today, I would like to go over my top 10 new character options coming to Zweihander Reforged. But before we get started here, I should give a disclaimer. World of Game Design has paid me to make this video. The joke's on them, though, because there's no way I wasn't going to talk at length about a project that I contributed to. That's right, I am now a professional writer. My name is on the Kickstarter. Okay. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. For number one, we have a brand new ancestry, The Awakened. The Awakened is a construct race, whether that be a living marble statue, an animated scarecrow, or some other hybrid of non-living material and mortal flesh. This is the ancestry to take when you want to play out the fantasy of being Frankenstein's monster, or a steam-powered automaton, or even Emmy from the movie Mannequin. Have any, you guys have all seen that one, right? Yeah. Well, The Awakened was one of the ancestries that my wife playtested for a bit, and she had a blast as an ancient statue that was granted sentience, and I bet that a ton of other players are going to find this their go-to ancestry of choice. Point of order, the original Zweihander came out with five ancestries. Zweihander Reforged comes out swinging with 15 different options. All right, my number two item is a profession, the Rune Warrior. Now, I have never made a secret of loving to play warriors who blend spell and sword, and this profession absolutely scratches that itch. Rune Knights can ignore materials when casting certain spells by using their weapon instead as a focus for their energies. They can also use their combat-based skills when casting spells rather than relying on their skill in occultism, which means right out the gate, you're going to feel like a warrior who straddles the line between the two methods. I love this class and absolutely will play this one the next chance that I get. All right, rounding the bases to number three is another profession, the Base Brawler. In the supplement, Main Gauche, the Blitzballer profession was introduced to the game. Effectively, this was a way to play an American footballer as a gritty survivor, and it was a pretty entertaining class. Following in the same tradition, Zweihander Reforged brings us the Base Brawler, a cultured profession that brings the excitement of baseball to a grim and perilous world. So whether you're batting projectiles back towards your foes with your Base Brawler mace, or you're weakening those foes with a well-placed swing to the knees, the base brawler is sure to be a fun addition to any party. Batters up! <laughs> I'm tickled by that joke. Coming to number four, we have another ancestry, the Siabra. Longtime fans of Zweihander will recognize the Siabra as an elven people who have given over to corruption and chaos. Basically, they are elven sea reavers. Well, the Siabra are back now as a player ancestry, but with a couple of twists, the most notable being their mask. Each Siabra wears a ceremonial mask tied to an emotion that's important to them. The mask of the Siabra is considered to be the most important cultural item that they have, and to take one's mask off and show your true face to outsiders is to be considered lost to your own people. This is going to lead to a lot of interesting characters, I think, and gives a new spin on a Zweihander classic that I believe is going to be well received. We reach number five with a brand new spell, the Carbuncle of Horror. Now look, there's something to be said about classic magic spells, such as the ability to get glimpses into the future, or to bring down fire that destroys your enemies. But all too often, we are denied our true desire to become a big, ugly, gross slime being and ooze through the latest adventure. As a slime with this spell, you can climb walls and extend your weapon reach, but you're going to want to be careful not to miscast it. Otherwise, you may accidentally turn your lower body into a gelatinous blob and find yourself completely unable to move. 
I like this spell because I like seeing magic that gets into the weird. And all too often in tabletop role-playing games, we find the same spells being reproduced over and over, and this presents a nice change of pace. My number six choice is another profession, the Barber Surgeon. While it's not a new profession, the Barber Surgeon is a classic, and the new rules for supply has changed how this class's professional talent, pliers, scalpel, bone saw, works. Not only can you play a Barber Surgeon that can bind wounds more often than other survivors, you can also never have to roll supply checks to see if your bandages run out. So while the Barber Surgeon isn't a stand-in for good, solid decision-making, at least you don't have to suffer the indignancy of running out of the tools you need when it's time to cut them and stitch them. All right, coming in at number seven, the Poison Cradle. Covenant Magic was introduced to the Mango Supplement in 2019. Basically, whereas Divine Magic comes from gods who dwell in the Well of Souls, and Arcane Magic comes from the threads of the Ethereal Veil, Covenant Magic comes from the friends you make along the way, friends from beyond the Veil. The Beyonders are those outsiders to reality who have been exiled from the Well of Souls, demigods whom the other gods noped out of their homes. But they are still incredibly powerful in their own right, and by making a pact with one of these entities and adopting some of their goals and traits, you too can wield their usually pretty messed up power. One of the new beyonders to Zweihander is the Poisoned Cradle, the antithesis of the goddess, the martyr, bringing decay and ruin with her very touch, rather than the gifts of life and light. The magic she grants causes pain, sows chaos, and even allows you to take control of the bodies of others. Damn. <laughs> Alright, well number eight is going to be a hit with a lot of players, and that's a new ancestry, the Dampier. The Dampier is a survivor who is descended from a line of vampires, or has the stain of vampirism on their souls. Dampier characters may find themselves granted a creature of the night as a companion, or blessed with supernatural strength. And while I don't believe they gain any automatic proficiency with a katana, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few players who follow the path of Blade and seek to destroy that which created their cursed lives. The Dampier is a classic staple in horror, and I'm excited to see it here. Alright, well, number nine moves away from ancestries, professions, and magic, and comes in the form of a new weapon, the Zweihander Reforged Rulebook itself. That's right, the giant one to two-handed tome in which we find all of these fun options makes an appearance as well, ready to help players take on their foes. It's such a delightful choice to include for a number of reasons. First, we have the meta edition of the rulebook existing as a physical object in the world. Second, anyone looking to weaponize the rulebook against their unsuspecting game master now have an actual viable option. I like to imagine that during the survivor's downtime, they decide to strategize and prepare for the horrors of tomorrow by getting in a quick session of Zweihander before they take a rest. While to some, this may seem like a really tongue-in-cheek option to include in the rules, I believe that this splash of fun reminds us that the, we were all here to play a game and tell awesome stories with our friends. The fact that the stories can then be used to punish evil is just icing on the cake. Finally, we reach number 10, probably my very favorite addition to Zweihander Reforged, the Spiritualist Profession. The Spiritualist stands between the world of the living and the dead, able to interact with spirits who have not yet passed on. In addition to being able to speak with the dead and master various forms of magic, the Spiritualist also has the ability to befriend at least one of these spirits and are granted a companion in the form of a phantom. I find this amazingly flavorful as a character option and it opens up so many pathways in which to engage with the game. For years, I've envisioned a character of an old man whose wife has passed on, but unwilling or unable to let go, he anchors her spirit to the world so that he may still be able to share his life with her. With the spiritualist profession, I can finally make my saddest character idea into a reality. And while that may sound like a joke, I assure you it's not. Bravo on this addition to the game, I am 100% on board. As I said before, there's a lot to love about Zweihander Reforged, for not only game masters, but for players as well. And while it may be hard sometimes to convince your game master to run a new system that you want to try, I personally think that that blow is softened by passion and excitement for the game. And if passion isn't enough to sway your game master, consider pledging to the Zweihander Reforged Kickstarter and maybe grabbing them a copy. I've made a video detailing what that Kickstarter encompasses, which you can see right over here, as well as included a link to the Kickstarter in the thing below. Now, as someone who's played the newest iteration of Zweihander as a tester for over the past year, I can say honestly that this game has a lot of fun to offer either side of the table, and it's well worth being added to anyone's game collection. Either way, 
Thank you for taking the time to listen to just a few things that I'm excited about with the release of this game, and I look forward to seeing you next time.